Hey guys, what's up? It's Krupsy, and I just want to give you guys some tips on how you can quickly improve in Beat Saber. Now, being good at Beat Saber obviously comes down to skill at the end, but there is a lot of things that you can change that I wish I knew while learning how to play that can make you a lot better really quickly. Now, all of these tips I'm going to give are going to apply to all VR headsets, so regardless of whatever one you use, you can still apply all of these tips. Now, the first thing that I would recommend changing is your grip settings. This basically determines the angle and position that the Saber comes out of your controller. Now, I've only used the Valve Index and the Quest 2 to play Beat Saber, as well as the Rift S, and for all of those controller types, I'm not a big fan of the default grip settings. I just don't think they work very well, especially if you're trying to play faster maps. So after you start playing the game for a while, you're going to want to have to change it because once you set your grip settings, it's going to become muscle memory. And if you don't change it to something that gives you an advantage, then it's going to become a problem and it's going to lower your accuracy. Not only is it going to lower your accuracy, but it's going to lower your ability to play faster songs without missing or getting bad cuts. Now, if you're playing on the PC version of Beat Saber, a mod that I really recommend is called Easy Offset. Now, this mod is awesome because what it allows you to do is do a swing benchmark so you can determine what the best Saber settings is for you. Basically, you'll just swing up and down a few times as if there was a block in front of you at 140 degrees angle at minimum. And then you can click Set Swing Preferences and it will adjust the offset based on how you swung your controller. Now, for the Quest 2, I don't really have any controller offset recommendations. However, you can just search up a certain offset and then adjust it to how you'd like. And for Valve Index controller, if you want, you can use my offset. I'll put it on screen right now. This is what I use. But again, this isn't for everyone. This is actually Parapass's offset. I took it from him and I adjust them to be like mine. So thanks. What offset you have on your controller and your preferences are going to have a huge impact on your accuracy and your ability to play speed maps and just normal maps in general. All right, now the second thing that I want to bring up is your NJS, which stands for note jump speed. This is basically how fast the note comes towards you and from what distance you actually are able to see the note at. You can always adjust your NJS to make it at a better pace for you. And over time, you should learn how to play maps where the notes are coming at you faster and with less time to react. And the third thing I want to bring up is taking breaks. Seriously, do it. When you start playing for so long or you play a difficult map and then you continue on straight to the next one without a break, you're not giving yourself any time to recharge your stamina and you're not going to perform as well as if you just given yourself a minute to rest or even just have a sip of water look i played a lot of vr in my time but without a doubt the beat saber community is a community where people will bring themselves to their limits physically and mentally just for a couple more performance points so seriously just have some water and take breaks that's all i'm saying you can do so much with so little when I was grinding ranked for the first time, I just started playing Beat Saber and I wouldn't give myself any breaks, so I would not give myself any time to regain my energy and I would just do terrible on all my songs. So all I'm saying is give yourself a break. Also, if you haven't, make sure you subscribe because these videos take me a long time to make and all the support really means a lot. Anyways. All right, going on to the fourth thing I want to mention is to stop thinking. Seriously, if you are subconsciously thinking that, oh, I'm about to miss a note, I have to be careful not to miss a note, you are more likely to miss that note. Stop worrying that you're going to miss that note. It's going to make you play worse and it's going to stress you out. Let your mind wander off and your wrists and your arms will play for you. When you first start playing Beat Saber, you're going to have to subconsciously huh? think about what notes that you have to hit in and what direction. But after you start playing for a while, it becomes muscle memory and you stop thinking altogether. Seriously, look at these speed maps. You think pro players look at each note individually and say, oh, I had to hit it just like that? No. It will just come to you naturally and you will start to be able to play without thinking super hard. All I'm saying is just relax. My next piece of advice is to use your wrists and not your arms. If you pay attention to someone playing a faster map and you look at the handle of their sable, you're actually notice that you can't really move your arm that fast. That's not possible. However, you can do that with your wrists. This kind of goes back to the whole offset thing. Use the grip settings to your advantage. Instead of having to use your whole arms to hit notes, make it more about your wrists so that you're able to save stamina by only having to move your wrists and place than having to swing your entire arm. Seriously, what do you think takes more energy? Doing this or doing this? I just can't stress how important this is because when you're going to be playing faster maps, you literally cannot be using your arms except for when it slows down. Wait, didn't huh? you just say to use only your wrist? Yes, but not in every situation. If you're playing a slower part of a map or just a slow map in general, you don't need to use your wrist. You can get higher accuracy by using more of your arms. This is an example of when you would use your wrists. And this is an example of when you would use your entire arm.
So to sum it up, if you're looking for accuracy and it's a slower song, use more of your arms. If you need less accuracy and just more speed, use your wrists. However, when you improve at the game, you can start to learn how to use your wrist and maintain a high accuracy. Change your grip settings so it favors you swinging your wrist to make a full motion of swinging. Like for me, when I'm playing, I don't actually hold my controller right side up. I hold it to the side and I swing up and down. Anyways, so now what I want to mention is where you hit the block on your saber. So when you hit the block higher up on the saber, it allows you to have much faster speed. But again, this is at the cost of accuracy. Meanwhile, if you're hitting the saber at a lower part of your saber, such as the saber handle or really close to your hand, it makes it so much easier to get high scores and perfect hits. It just depends what scenario you're in, you're going to be swapping between both. Either hitting the block at the tip of your saber or hitting it near the handle of your saber. Or even in between. This is just an extra thing that I want to mention, but I think it helps me a lot, is to turn on static lights while you're playing faster songs. Yes, the environments and the lighting is very pretty, I know, but you're going to need to focus. And having those flashing lights in the background while you're trying to be precise is not helpful. In the player options tab, there is a setting to just set all the lights to static so you don't have to worry about them. All right, for my next tip is to adjust your player height. Some people find that all the notes that are coming towards you are way too high up. And you can do this by turning off auto player height, slamming your headset down to the floor and clicking set height. This makes the blocks come at you at a much lower height and it's really useful for some people because having to move your hands or your sabers all the way up there, it's just a waste of stamina when they could be lower. If you feel that adjusting your player height to 0.2 meters tall is too much for you, or I guess in this case too little, you can always adjust it to how you feel is right for you. And the final thing that I want to mention is that this takes time. Seriously, you have to put in a lot of hours to become really good at this game. While some people find it very easy to improve their skills at Beat Saber, it doesn't come naturally to everyone, and that's normal. It didn't come naturally to me, and it took me a lot of time to improve. Seriously, you should see some of my first videos. They're horrendous. Like, look at this! I don't have any good lights on and I miss notes on one of the easiest songs in the whole world. Anyways, now what I want you to do is I want you to apply everything that I've taught you and I guarantee you will find yourself improving at the game quicker and you will just be better at the game. I had a lot of problems as a content creator and as someone who plays Beat Saber and it took me a lot of time to fix those. So I want to make your guys' life easier. You can also join my Discord, which will be on the screen right now and in the description, and you'll be able to ask me questions there. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys next time. Later.